So have you played in a lot of um, small venues um, on your tour recently? So when, when you, what do you mean by small venues when you say small venues? Um, well, Flyers Cafe is in Dunville where you'll be performing is a smaller venue. Um, it, it holds about 90 to 100 people, um, okay. but a lot of the artists that have come previously always come back because they enjoy the atmosphere. And I wondered if um, you've had the same experience um, in the past with some of your other performances across the country. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, we, we really try to perform uh, anywhere um, in, in many different kinds of venues. It could be, you know, uh, a, a large, very large folk festival, or it could be a theater or a club or, you know, uh, obviously cafes are great. And, and I really like the, the atmosphere of smaller venues as well um, because it really gets back to, to, I think, our roots in our tradition uh, musically um, in that we... we Grew up playing bluegrass uh, and you know and uh, root style music and, and gospel music and, and, and old folk music and that sort of thing and um, and really a, a lot of our development of that style when we were kids James and I when we were younger um, was just sitting around in the living room and, and playing with our family and uh, and we still continue to do that um, to this day we we're actually the fourth generation of uh, Abrams on the road playing music so we have quite a quite a, um, a, a a, uh, a list of family members that are, are involved in music in different uh, in different ways. So even after you know family dinner, we'll still we'll still get together and jam. And and uh, you know even sometimes our great grandmother who's still alive, she's 95 years old now, she will sometimes you know if she's there for dinner, she'll she'll sing harmony with us. And and um, so that kind of atmosphere, if you will, that kind of uh, living room feel, uh, we really like uh, as well. And so when we go in the room, we get to ch a chance to play. Sometimes we sometimes we do play smaller venues like cafes and, and, and such. It really kind of it feels a little bit like that, right? It feels like you're in a you know a a, 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 a small like a living room where you've got uh, people sitting around, maybe drinking coffee or, or or having desserts or whatever, and 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 listening and, and, and taking part. And, and that intimate experience is um, not foreign to us. Um, and it's also uh, it's also a kind of a neat uh, a neat thing as well when it comes to our music. Oh, that's amazing! And I I think it's really interesting that you've you've been brought up with this musical background through multiple generations of your family. Um, and I, I wonder, was there a point in in your life or your brother's life um, where that that musical background? you went through that rebellious stage where you didn't want to be part of that, or has music in your family always been held very close to you? Oh, no, no, music in our family has been really, really close to us always. I mean, we, we never felt like we needed to rebel because, the, you know, because there is, you know, the thing for us when it comes to music is that all music is, is uh, you know, can be, can be, uh, can be relevant to, to what you're doing. And, I guess, I guess for us, we started at, at such a young age uh, playing, you know, roots and bluegrass music that, um, you know, it was it was uh, something we knew from an from an area very early on. Uh, but then also, we just we really developed a natural appreciation for it because, um, you know, it's it's a, there's a vitality, there's a reality to that music, there's a uh, there's a realness and, a, and an authenticity to that music that that is it's uh, infectious and it, and it kind of doesn't matter uh, how old you are you can be young you can be old you can be, you know, it doesn't matter um, you know uh, music that's organic and real um, like bluegrass music or folk music or or uh, anything that that has really been developed um, as a musical genre uh, that isn't um, you know pieced together uh, you know kind of a mass manufacturer uh, uh, sort of way uh, something that's that's really developed over time um, is, is, is infectious, and we found that to be the case. Now, um, you know, we started, we, uh, bluegrass is really our roots, but we also were, uh, you know, very influenced by many different styles of music. I mean, our iPod has um, everything. <laughs> and right. I want to say that. I mean, I really mean everything um, on, on our uh, iTunes list. And so, you know, for us, naturally, um, we, we wanted to start creating our own style of music, our own Abrams Brothers music, if you will, taking in those different influences and bringing them uh, with our roots. And really, our new record, Northern Redemption, that came out in, in June, is uh, mostly original songs that we've written. And it's a real blend of our traditions um, in our bluegrass roots um, with 
some more contemporary and uh, and and modern influences that that you know can be more relatable to certainly to our to our peers and our generation. Yeah. Now, just on the topic of um, influences, I was really curious in knowing. Um, I, I know you. Some of your influences musically are, are very obvious, um, especially with your album Blue on Brown, um, covering Arlo Guthrie and, and Bob Dylan. But I wondered why go so far as to produce an entire album of their music where you could just maybe mix in a couple of their songs with some of your original work? Well, that was really kind of a, a, a concept that, that came together before we were writing our own songs. Okay. Um, we... we um, um, you know, we wanted to do the, this tribute album to, to you know, Arthur Guthrie and Bob Dylan simply for the, the, I mean, we really loved their music, but we purely just wanted to, in the very beginning, uh, do something that was different than, than expected um, with kind of the bluegrass genre. And, and I'll take you back a little bit uh, farther, Lacey, to, to the original conception of that album. Um, we, uh, we, Record. We used to record all of our albums in Luray, Virginia, and uh, that was back when we were recording some pretty, you know, traditional bluegrass um, music. And and uh, and at the same time, um, uh, somebody brought to our attention that that uh, you know uh, Arlo Guthrie's you know music ha- has uh, has a neat uh, you know correlation and, and could sound really neat as a as a bluegrass um, uh, you know in, in bluegrass versions. And we thought, hey, that's a great idea. And and we thought, hey, you know, let's take this a step further and uh, and really bring Arlo Guthrie's uh, music um, into kind of our Abrams Brothers bluegrass um, genre, um, as opposed to kind of you know our own sort of Abrams Brothers style. And we wanted to do, we thought, you know what, Bob Dylan would be great as well because that same folk era, he had just so much great writing, and it would be very unexpected, if you will. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that was something I found really interesting when I started doing some research about you, and it was I happened to catch one of your songs um, in the spring, just on a college radio publication, oh, cool. and cool. I, I I didn't even I didn't catch the opening comments. I just heard the music, and it was like, oh my goodness, I have to know who they are. And from oh, that man, point I'm on, really glad to hear that. yeah, um, from that point on, it was wow, like these guys are fantastic, and then. Um, the festival, I, to find out that you're coming to Dunville and you're part of the River Arts Festival is just fantastic. Um, and I think it's really encouraging for young artists because a lot of the, the media that are talking about the Abrams Brothers are, are talking about how young you are but how experienced you are. And I, I think that's really important. Um, well, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, it's... Um, it's uh, it's an interesting thing, you know, with this new record that we, we, you know, lyrically there's a real kind of, I, I, I feel that, you know, what came out lyrically was is this real kind of paradox between um, our uh, our youth. I mean, we're I'm, I'm 21 years old, uh, my brother's 18, and even our cousin Elijah, who who plays in the band, plays bass, man, he's he's 21 as well. Yeah. Um, but that uh, is uh, runs parallel to the fact that we've been on the road for. My brother and I, James and I, have been on the road for ten years. Right. Um, so, so we've we, this, for this album, we really um, kind of uh, listening back to it. We realized, wow, there's a real lyrically, there's a real common theme between songs, and that there's a sense of, of youthful energy and youthful um, youthful expectations um, of life. But at the same time, there's a sense of experience and, extent, and a, a sense of um, Think agedness even um, simply because you, there's no way we could have avoided having all those road experiences that we've had in life so far, um, you know, play a part in our original material. So it's kind of an interesting conundrum that that the lyrics, um, you know, present in, on the new album. Yeah, it, it's really interesting. And and then once I was doing some more um, research, I found it really interesting that you chose to cover um, Coldplay's "Viva La Vida." Now, is is that another um, more modern influence for your your performances, or was this something that you thought would be fun to do? Well, it, it's both both ways. Um, you know, first of all, um, that whole uh, that whole thing came out of us uh, wanting to do a, um, a, a an Abrams Brothers version of a top forty song or a top you know a, a Billboard Hot one hundred song at the time, and that was. 
um, you know, early summer of 2008, and at the time, you know, there was a bunch of songs on the radio that were climbing the charts, and Viva La Vida was one of them. Um, and so we thought it'd be cool to record um, one of those songs to um, also kind of generate, you do an internet version of the song to generate internet traffic to our name, kind of one of those, you know, a thing that's very common on YouTube now. Yes. Um, but at the same time, we're, it worked out really well because we're, we're really big Coldplay fans, and I'm, I'm just, an, I, I think I've bought every piece <laughs> of music they've ever released. Wow. Uh, the, even the stuff that, like, you, you can't really, you know, find that easily, like, I've, I've gone and found it, I'm, I really love, I love their, the band, and, and, and I know all of us really appreciate their music, so... We said, oh, man, Viva La Vida's on the airwaves now. Let's, well, you know, that's the single that's been released. Let, let's do that. So it it, um, it turned into something that we played more and more in our shows. And then CMT, Country Music Television, in, um, in out of Nashville, um, wanted us to make a music video for it. And so we started working together with them and CMT Canada to get that finished. But, but we had one hurdle to get over, and that was to, get us, uh, to acquire a SYNC, S-Y-N-C, SYNC license. Uh, for the video, um, in order to be able to, to do a cover of, of their song and put it on, on air. And um, so we actually ended up getting our song to Coldplay, to uh, Chris, Johnny, uh, Will, and Guy, uh, when they were um, uh, on tour in Australia at the time. And uh, kind of through the grapevine, we, we got word back that they really loved our version of the song. We thought it was fantastic um, and, uh, and, and thought it was a really, really cool take on what they had done. And, and, and they said, you know, boys, you can have the take like this for free don't worry about it just go ahead and and oh, wow. um, and that that was a real encouragement to hear that back um it was like wow like you know we're being being fans of the music it was a real stamp of approval and it just kind of made us go i think we're doing the right thing in life <laughs> you know playing music and and uh and doing our own thing and, and so it was a real uh, real encouragement to hear that from them considering we really respect their music Oh, wow. So, keeping with the same theme, um, something that the River Arts Festival does is likes to they like to pair um, more established artists with young, up-and-coming artists. Um, so, for you, you can completely understand where um, a local performer from Dunville gets the opportunity to open for the Abrams Brothers and O oh, Susanna. Um, could you maybe comment on how important that is as a, as a performer to have that encouragement and have that experience? Oh well, I, I think it's first of all, I think it's flattering that we're the we're on the established artist end, and and you know, um, and that somebody else is coming up in the ranks is going to open for us. I mean, um, we're because we have, I think being being a band, you know, you constantly put your nose to the grindstone and and you think, okay, how can we get farther? How can we get farther? And and uh, so it's, uh, I, I think it's it's a bit of uh, an eye opener when when um, when we we're kind of considered that way and it's a real we're really thankful for that and 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 you know let me say also that i think it's really awesome whenever that happens um regardless of what end of the spectrum we're on um when an artist you know a, 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 you know sort of an up-and-comer is, is paired with an established artist um you know that sort of um inspiration uh it, it uh, I think it goes two ways, you know, and, and, and from the from the um, perspective of the the up and coming artist, it, it's it's a real. Um, I think I'm going to use the word encouragement again on on uh, on what they're doing, and and uh, gives you a motivation because I know that was what it was like for us to be guests um, with Mike Snyder and his string band on the Grand Ole Opry when my brother was 12 and I was 15. Um, to be able to stand on that stage and uh, in Nashville, that iconic stage, and you know, be invited to come and, and just being, you know, two young guys from Southern Ontario, um, that was a real boost of confidence and, and uh, really gave us a drive to want to keep going at music and, and uh, make it our career. Um, and, and the same thing, you know, being the, if you're an established artist, you know, with somebody uh, opening for you, you, you see the vitality and energy that, that it is to, to be somebody who, who wants to, to, to plow ahead in, in their music career. and um, if at any point you you uh, are you know uh, uh, losing energy, seeing that really helps uh, helps develop that. I mean, we're we're continuously building our energy to to moving forward, and, and we're very excited about these opportunities. Oh, good. So, how have you enjoyed touring with O Susanna? Oh, it's it's been great, and I think it's been great from the from the simple fact that. 
uh, Susie's connected to us more than just kind of us um, being put together on the same bill. Um, our drummer, Cam Giroux, C-A-M, Giroux, G-I-R-O-U-X, um, is actually Susie's husband. So, um, uh, we're, you know, I see Susie all the time when, you know, uh, Susie and Cam and, and uh, their son Sal might come down and Cam has to, has to, you know, rehearse with us before we go on the road and such. And so for us to kind of be, uh, be all put together on the road, uh, it's great because we already know each other really well and uh, and musically it works really well together because obviously Cam plays with Susie and they're, they're they, you know, they play together. And so when we all get up on the stage and, and sing songs together, it's kind of like, a you know, one great big family. So it's pretty cool. Oh, wow. So it's the Abrams Brothers and Extended Family. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, way to put it. good, good. Um, so you mentioned earlier that some of um, your music videos were done to have a web presence. Now, um, with your brother and, and you having traveled and experienced the music industry for 10 years in Canada, um, have you noticed a shift in the importance of online media um, with reaching your fans and reaching new fans? Oh, absolutely. Um, and and uh, that shift, you know, aside from the from the common shift I think we're all aware of, of, of just the, the impact that the Internet is having on every, everyday lives of, of, of anybody, um, not that necessarily just for music, but just for life in general, how, how uh, much of a tool it's become uh, to use every day. That one's, that one's the most obvious, I think. Um, but then, you know, so, so that shift we've, we've really seen, you know, YouTube coming out and becoming, you know, one of the best ways to get your music out there uh, if you're on, uh, not, you know, not as well known is a, is a, is a great tool and something we didn't have when we were a whole lot younger. Um, but, uh, but at the same time, I think for us, we kind of had our own shift and our own shift was coming out of, um, you know, traditional bluegrass music and kind of playing the, the traditional bluegrass festival circuit where um, the demographic is typically a little bit older, um, not to say that there's a, there isn't a huge movement of young people who love acoustic movie, music and bluegrass music, and we're seeing that more and more all the time, but at the time when we were younger, you know, the, the audience was generally a little older, so, so um, you know, the, the internet, even when it was kind of coming on in our, in our later uh, years of, of that stage in our life, um, wasn't nearly as prevalent as when we started moving into playing our own style of music that... Uh, was, you know, appealing to not just, you know, kind of an older demographic, but, you know, a uh, middle demographic and a young demographic. Um, and so um, we started thinking, okay, well, now we have to also shift our attention really to, um, to online stuff and, and, uh, and Facebook and Twitter and, and all of that. Um, and uh, I think just, it just, it, all of those things work together with the kind of the general changes that have been happening in, in society over the past, you know, let's say 10 years. Yeah, so aside from looking up the Abrams Brothers on YouTube or looking at your website, Facebook, um, what would be something you would suggest to someone that doesn't exactly know what your music's like or um, isn't familiar with the Abrams Brothers or Oh Susanna? What would you suggest to them um, if they're coming to your show in, at the Rivers Arts Festival? Oh, well, yeah, I, we, we constantly try and place an emphasis on having a really energetic and lively show. I mean, that for us has is, is always been the case. I think that's just as, uh, as a result of the, the roots uh, of music that we come from. Bluegrass music is a very energetic music. It's very uh, um, uh, passionate and, and, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of times up-tempo. Uh, up um, so we, we try and keep that as a part of our show because it's, it's important to, to where we come from musically. Um, but, you know, our... Our motto, at the core of what we do, um, our um, creed to live by um, for, for our music has always been that um, we can touch people's hearts in the audience and that, uh, you know, they walk away from the show feeling changed for the better and, uh, and that, you know, um, you know that, that our music will impact uh, somebody in, in, in some way, uh, maybe more profoundly than just kind of the... the uh, maybe the service level happiness you might get from, from just throwing on a record, that there's a difference uh, in playing live. There's a real connection you can have with the audience, a real, um, you know, a real tie that you develop with, with your personal audience that, that's so specific and so unique to live performances, um, a real relationship, if you will. And so 
um, our hope is that people's lives will be touched, and, and that's always been our, our hope. And and, um, and we, you know, even if it's one by one, concert by concert, that's uh, as long as we, we're doing that, then we're doing what, what we're meant to do. Oh, that's amazing. And I mean, you can tell by the way you speak that this is something that you believe in. This is something you're passionate in. And I, I, I just know that the, your brother and your cousin both feel the exact same way, or you wouldn't be doing what you're doing, and it wouldn't translate through your music. Um, totally, I, I, I agree. I, I, you know, I, if we weren't all on the same page, it just uh, it, it wouldn't work. And, and part of the fact, well, the fact that we're family also helps that too. We have a, you know, my brother and I growing up, we've we've always been not just been brothers but best friends, and so we've always had a coherent vision uh, with our music, just because you know we're um, we're we're so close. We've always been so close, and it's just him and I as brothers. So it, we, you know, when we were little kids we kind of only had each other and um thankfully uh extended beyond that we've been able to have a, a great relationship with our cousin elijah and, and um and he joined the band five years ago to uh take our grandfather's place he used to play bass for us actually um and at one time it was three generations on stage at the same time our dad oh sorry our grandfather our dad and our and james and i but you know keeping that that family t- tie together is so important to us because you know um it's, uh, there's, a, there's a relationship that we have that's, that's very strong and, and, uh, and kind of a coherent vision that we have. So I appreciate your words very much, uh, Lacey. I, that means a lot. Oh, good. Well, I don't want to keep you anymore because I know you that you've got to study. So I just, I really thank you for taking the time to speak with me, and I really, really look forward to the show. Well, and you'll be there? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Lovely. Listen, if you, if you do end up coming, please come up and introduce yourself. Absolutely. I, I, I'd really like to thank you in person. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and good luck with your exam. Thanks, Alicia. I All appreciate right. that. Take care. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye.